All right. Um, this is part two of a, uh, a two-part series on Capricorn, on an aspect of Capricorn, which is the relationship, the dynamic relationship between goals and structure. Okay. Well, yes, yesterday, last video I did on the individual and how the individual needs a goal to make a structure have any kind of meaning. Um, and that was relatively straightforward. Okay. But this one, I decided to do one on politics and culture uh, with this same dynamic in mind. And I was like, found myself just stymied, um, mainly because it's so complicated. And so I'm a very intuitive person. I usually work pretty, you know, just wing, winging a lot of stuff in my life. But this I decided, at first I was going to wing this whole thing. And then I decided, no, what I need to do, and that was just this morning, I decided, no, I'm going to write the whole thing down and basically, so it's not going to be a typical podcast because um, I've got this thing written down, but I, you know, I w might uh, riff on certain parts of it. Okay, because it is very complicated and I'm not asking anybody to come to any conclusions because I don't have any conclusions. What I'm looking at is um, a way of thinking about whatever and that way of thinking is provided through the symbol the symbolic language of astrology. Okay. And remember, what we're dealing with is the ongoing conjunction between Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto in Capricorn, in late Capricorn, which will be there, you know, in one fashion or another until December 21st, which is winter solstice when both Saturn and Jupiter will enter Aquarius on the same day, on that day. And from then on, there's going to be a complete shift. We're not sure what that shift is going to look like, but this is our testing time. This is like the baby being, the, ba the labor of the baby being born. <laughs> that sound you heard was my dog wagging his tail. Okay. Um, now, a note on language. On, so I'm trying to use language to m put a map on a mysterious territory. And that's always what we do with language. It's never complete. It's never um, correct. It's, it, we're approximating. We're always approximating, trying to get somewhere with this instrument we have called our brain, which identifies certain things as with words and then starts to work with the words rather than the reality underneath them. And uh, so I call it the map and the territory problem. I'll probably do a longer podcast on that someday because it sure has a lot of relevance now. Uh, or we could say it's, I'm trying to fix the flux. Okay, the flux is endless, it's ongoing, and humans constantly try to fix it by making maps of meaning uh, over the, the ongoing mystery. Okay, and I'm doing this by utilizing the language of astrology. Okay, so remember astrology is a language. It's not a belief system. It's a language. It's a symbolic language. And the three planets that are conjunct are, remember, Jupiter, which has a very expansive, enlarging energy. It's a 12-year cycle. Saturn, which sets limits. It disciplines and channels. It's a 30-year cycle. And Pluto, which has a 248-year cycle, is the life force itself. It's correlated. I should say always correlated with the life force itself. The ongoing cycling through birth, death, rebirth, death, and growth, maturity, old age, death, and so forth of any entity, any, any living entity. Okay, so all three of them are conjunct. It's a very rare thing to have a 12-year cycle, a 30-year cycle, and a 248-year cycle all conjunct at the same time. And they happen to conjunct this year in the sign of Capricorn, which is a very Saturn sign. Saturn rules Capricorn. So it has to do with the structures we put in place in society basically, which is why it makes, you know, talking about the political and cultural ramifications of the, um, the dynamic between Saturn and Pluto and Jupiter 
among Saturn and Pluto, Jupiter, uh, extremely important, and the dynamic between the goals and structures of this this um, this dynamic between the, all three of them. Okay, okay. Now, I want to illustrate that it's very hard to separate out the realms of the individual and the dynamic between uh, Saturn, or excuse me, between structure and 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 goals and the cultural political ramifications. It's very hard to separate them out because they tend to merge, which is a very non-Saturn thing. Saturn doesn't like any kind of mergers. Saturn likes to keep clear boundaries, clear definitions. Okay, so I find it relatively easy to talk about individuals because without a goal, a structure becomes meaningless. Without a structure, a goal cannot be accomplished. That's for anyone. But you couldn't talk about the assumptions that hold only certain structures in place and or allow for only certain goals. For example, and this is for the individual, for example, that a biological reality, biological identity, including binary sexuality, that used to be a given. Now it's not. What happened? I'll leave you and the politically correct, virtually signing, signaling university gender studies to ponder this question. And it does feed into what I want to talk about here, political and cultural goals and structures. And notice how in the above case, it feeds back to the personal. For example, once that assumption of binary sexual identity or gender, I don't know which is which, um, is called into question, politically and culturally, then the individual who wants to, quote, change genders can actually consider, that's his goal then, putting a structure in place to change his body, both hormonally and surgically, to at least pretend to reach a goal that would have been considered a possible, impossible a few generations ago. So the individual and the political, cultural dynamics feed one another. I'm trying to separate that, was, that which is actually impossible to separate. Again, it all goes back to maps versus the territories, a subject I will address more deeply in, a, in another podcast. Okay. Okay, another, another uh, topic here, which adds complexity to the situation. Reality and appearance. So let's add some complexity to political and cultural. One term that's come into common use since the movie Matrix was released in 2007 is that word itself, matrix, seen as a structure of the veil that has been drawn over reality so that we cannot encounter reality itself until we, quote, take the red pill. Another movie, They Live, does a similar job with sunglasses, which show the, quote, reality behind the, quote, appearances. Already, we're in territory not covered in part one. For the individual, structures can be freely chosen, or that is the assumption I made. But what if any structure the individual decides on is part of only certain ways of thinking that can be imagined given the way the individual has been trained since childhood, which of course is always true and not what I discussed in part one. There I was thinking of people as conscious beings engaged in constructing their own lives according to their choosing with goals they determined. Immediately, the situation gets messy, hard to talk about, not at all Capricornian, which aims for clarity and uses graphs, charts, outlines, logical argument, and all the apparatus constructed by a technological Capricornian society. Okay, let's try again. Let's go back and again pretend that we can talk about structures and goals politically and culturally. At least take a stab at it. Today's political culture, polarized as usual and becoming more and more extreme. The goals of the left seem to be short-term and relentless. Get rid of Donald Trump, no matter what it takes, dispute election, Russian collusion, impeachment, destroy economy, parentheses COVID, race war, COVID again. But why is destroying Trump the goal? 
because of the larger goal, New World Order, which Trump opposes or seems to oppose. He wants nationalism and a structure of equal trading partners with all other nations, all of whom are also great in their own terms. But most leftists don't even realize that is the goal, the goal of the New World Order, a goal decades in the making. They are still swallowing the blue pill. The aimed for New World Order goal is extremely Capricornian. Top-down structure, centralized government, national borders erased, people chipped, tracked, etc. But that's paranoid, leftists will argue. Has no basis in reality, just a figment of imagination. So, layers of the structure. Think again about the matrix and about now, layers of structure, each one covering others so that you have what seems to be the goal, but what is really the goal beyond that? For example, now, masking, social distancing, one-way aisles in stores, keep people obedient, muffled and apart, more and more intricate rules to follow, with the overall structure continuously shifting. It's getting better, but expecting to be worse later. Oh, now the worst is here now. Buttressed with lying statistics, each again a false, fake structure aiming to buttress the false goal. For example, in this morning's local paper, a local, a very respected doctor says the antibody test for COVID is useless. Wow. That's, I mean, I assumed that, but I sure hadn't heard it from a doctor before that's local. But then he followed it with, the best thing to do is stay masked and keep your distance. Okay. <laughs> Remember, I'm not attempting to figure anything out here, but just to use this idea of the dynamic balancing act between goals and structure and foolishly attempt to apply it to this year's Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, Capricorn focus. You could say, and I say, that Trump is here as the agent to detonate the old Capricorn structure on, in preparation for the new Aquarian structure. Again, remember, it seems relatively straightforward when talking about this dynamic for the individual. But is it? The person might think that his goal is X, when actually it's been programmed into him or her by the culture or parents or school or media, etc., to want X. I'd like to think I'm talking about conscious, aware individuals who are taking charge of their own destiny in this manner. Scaling up. Okay, now add another person or a group of people. And even assuming awareness for each of them, they each also have their own goals, structures, etc., of which they are more or less conscious. I can remember um, in relationship, in you know one-to-one -one relationship, I always thought of the person, each person, and the relationship as basically another person or another entity, so that there are actually three people in the relationship, or three beings in the relationship having to negotiate that the third entity is equal to the, the other two. And how do, you, how do you manage to hold your individuality while being in relationship is always the question. And often what my generation um, invented, a word called codependency, is when the individuals do not do this. They end up trying to blend with one another, which never works. Somebody is going to take power over the other then. Okay. So back to um, what I was saying, scaling up. So scaling up in a couple, now let's say scaling up to a group. For example, the group we have here, there are nine people, or there are eight people right now. Okay, assuming awareness for each of us, we each have our own goals, structure, etc., of which we're all more or less conscious. So you add the group goal. So what's the group goal? Guess what? Immediately, power politics, politics enters the picture. How to create group goals and how to create the structures that will satisfy them 
while taking all individuals and their goals and structures into account. Instantly, the situation either gets very complicated or individual goals and structures are ignored, subsumed into the larger group goal. Decided by whom or what process? Politics enters the picture. Who influences whom? Whose opinion carries more weight, even if the structure is supposedly set up to make everyone equal? Socialism versus capitalism. Group identity versus individual identity. That happens to be the dynamic that we are constantly working with here and want to hold it as a dynamic and not make it go in one way or the other. In other words, the individual is very important and so is the group very important. And so there's this constant uh, tension and it's a dynamic tension which is extremely creative between the two. Okay, how much weight to give group goals and structures for, for an individual, for example, me, with food preservation now. I want to continue my group, my individual goals daily with both exopermaculture blog and my recapitulation project, working on all my old stuff, getting it all in order for an online archive, while adding this new group work that I decided on too. I mean, I decided we're gonna do, not that other people don't want to do it too, but I was the one that took the initiative in this case of drying herbs. And so does everyone else ha here have their own goals and structure, since we value individualism as equal to community. Okay, scale that dynamic up, way up, and you can see the temptation to just impose order, <laughs> which is a very Capricornian thing, of course. What does the more or less extreme right want? For capitalism to continue as usual? for Trump to win another term, and that's about it. What do people like me, always independent but formerly leaning left, want? I want all the plutonian corruption that has infected this culture to be exposed, expunged, and especially pedophilia, satanic ritual abuse, trafficking, and blackmail. This is why I applaud Trump. And this, I feel, is why the left and many rhino Republicans hate him. Their sins, their sins, will be exposed. What is the end game? Ultimately, and this is weird, everybody, everybody wants unification, one world. We differ in how we think that would look like, how to ensure unity, and I would add, without destroying the sovereignty of individuals. The Capricornian one world of centralized hierarchical new world order or the one world of Aquarian decentralized horizontally networked order. But that Aquarian world can itself take either of two forms, one of them excessively technological, driven by AI and turning everybody into partly robotic transhumans, the other deeply anarchistic in that everybody not only keeps his or her free will, but exercises it consciously while in cooperation with others. Unfortunately, only the second alternative requires awareness. And so it is much less likely, at least in the short run. Uh, sounds like I'm ending on a pessimistic note, and I am. Uh, and yet I'm an eternal optimist, so I'm not. <laughs> okay, next up, living the apocalypse a week from, two weeks from now.